The primary focus of the reel was just that, just to be real. Um, I didn't want to bring in anyone who was going to look down their nose and say, look, I'm successful and if you do X, Y, Z like me, you can make this amount of money. I just think that's boring. I think that's corny. That's not real. Um, at, at the time, we, we began the reel this year. Um, there were some, some topics going on in the United States that I just didn't approve of. And it was just the overall domestic abuse against the women. Um, the Ray Rice situation um, is the first one that comes to mind. And, you know, with me having a five-year-old daughter and, and a wife and being raised by women, like, I, I just have no tolerance for that. So I just wanted to make sure our guys were properly educated on it. Um, so I brought in a young lady where she just really was a victim of domestic abuse and it's always it always hits home whenever our young men can look and, and see and feel and witness the pain firsthand. Okay. Out of the blue, I didn't see him walk up from nowhere, but uh, their dad walked up and punched me in my face, in my the right side of my face. And it just threw me, because I honestly thought he hit the car. My girlfriend thought he hit the car, because he hit me so hard that my face just went sideways. I, I couldn't believe he hit me. And I kept saying, he hit me. My girlfriend kept saying, don't go back, don't go back to him. Me at the time, because he was technically the only guy that I could truly say that I loved at that time, I couldn't, as we saw earlier, love kept me there. Her struggle was, it was something different, like I had never heard before and I couldn't relate, but I felt for her just because I had, well, I have a sister and I have a mother and I know how I feel for them. And just for her to be able to go through what she went through every day and, and not knowing about, you know, the safety of her or of herself or her kids, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine like the pain that she went through. I think the genius thing about Keith's story is very similar to mine. He just never gave up. You know, he overcame all the adversity, um, all the statistics that weren't in his favor. Um, you know, he overcame those things. And along the way, he had to take some tough bumps. I think he was fired twice from McDonald's, actually, before he became the CEO of McDonald's. And, you know, he worked his way. And he come from the same environments a lot of us come from. And right there, our guys can, can pretty much pinpoint and connect directly and, and feel the truth and feel the real. And I think they really bought into the story. I didn't like to be told what to do. I'm sure some of you get that about you when coaches telling you what to do and they're asking you to do some things maybe that you don't agree with all the time. And it's not because uh, you think you know you, you, you want to do something different. It's because you just don't want to be told what to do. And I was that guy. I didn't want to be told what to do. Four people that are older, that are more experienced, are coaching me and telling me what to do, but yet I won't listen. I still want to do it my way. But I wasn't having any success. I was good. I was smart as a manager. I knew everything, but I wasn't having success. And so it was till then that I said, you know what? Let me try something. Won't cost me anything. Won't have to work any harder. All I had to do was listen. And when I started listening, this was in 1983, when I started listening, by 1992, I had my first restaurant. I was 31 years old when I started listening. Uh, for the Keith Manor story, um, I learned a lot, actually. Um, growing up, I was kind of a hard head sometimes. I wanted to do stuff my way. But just hearing his side of the story and how he, was, how he used to struggle doing it his way and never listening. And as soon as he started listening, as he failed, when he got to listening, everything just started to go in the right place, simply by just listening to people who are trying to help you and not push them away. And I went with him to counseling and therapy and all of that and thinking he would change, and he did. He did for a minute, but then he went right back. And it went from us fighting once a month, no, once every other month, to once a month, to once every two weeks, to once every week, to just about every day, literally. Like, I was scared to wear clothes, I was scared what I'm gonna cook today, I was scared what I'm gonna say today, I was scared 
when I went to school, I was an undergrad, and I was scared if I go to, college, to my class, if I get out late, if a teacher say, come here, I need to talk to you after class, I'm scared if I get home five minutes later, what he gonna do, what he gonna say, am I gonna get hit tonight? It, show, it shows that women are powerful, and that um, they go through a lot, a lot of emotional and physical tolls, not only from the uh, men, but just from the world. And she's just amazing because she fought through for so many years and was able to escape. Uh, I think uh, a lot of male athletes need to hear her story so they can learn that real men don't put their hands on women. So I get asked all the time, how did you get to where you are today? And you know, I sit back and I try to reflect and I, and I sometimes respond, I really don't know how. I really don't know how. And I, I think I feel that way. It's because I've been the type of person that as long as I was doing the right things, as long as whatever I was being taught, I executed, then it was natural for good things to happen to me. It becomes unnatural when you're taught something and you don't execute it, you can't possibly think good things are gonna happen. If you don't execute the play, good things can't happen. If you don't execute on defense, good things can't happen. The first time someone shows you who they are, you better believe them. And that was by Maya Angelou that you honor just recently passed, about a year or two ago. Believe them. If somebody tells you, shows you off gate who they are, don't wait to give them a second chance or a third. Some people might change on a second, but after the second chance, if they don't change, I don't care what type of relationship it is, believe them. I enjoy working the hours. I enjoy dealing with the stuff. What about the money? The money was going to come. They could have told me I volunteered at McDonald's. I just enjoyed doing it and going. And so I, I, I caution you that if your dreams are being chased because there's a dollar sign at the end of it, erase it out of your heads. Because what happens is if you get caught up in that and you don't get the money, you get frustrated. You start doing all the court stuff. You start coming late. You start not caring. It's about what's in here. I would love to hear Lavelle say that he don't even have to coach you guys much anymore. He tell you what to do, y'all go out there and do it. He tell you what play to run, y'all go out there and run it. When adversity strikes, y'all know how to handle it. I love to hear that. You know why? Because to me, that means you made it. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.